Here at 12 News, we want to bring you the facts on the coronavirus without spreading any unnecessary fear. And as a part of that effort, we've assembled a panel of experts to help break down all of the recent developments and separate fact from fear. With us tonight, Arizona Public Health Services Director Dr. Kara Christ, Emergency Medicine Specialist at Valley Health, Dr. Frank Lavecchio, and Dr. Kevin Steffen, an Infectious Disease Specialist based out of Goodyear. Thank you all so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. All right, Dr. Christ, I want to start with you. Now, the newest information is that we have 10 cases here in Arizona. Apparently yesterday we had two confirmed positive. Today that was three. Uh, we have seven presumptive positive cases, the newest one being in Pima. And as of yesterday when we interviewed you, we had 115 people being tested. Today that number jumped to 143. I know we had talked about testing kits um, that you said that you have 800 test kits and that you could keep ordering more from the CDC. But apparently some of the people that we've talked to say that even though they exhibit the symptoms of the coronavirus, that they still can't get tested. Why is that? So what we're finding out is that we need to increase capacity statewide for the actual sample collection. So the actual swabbing of the inside of the nose. So we have testing available. We have it at our commercial labs. It's getting the sample. Mm -hmm. And we also understand that this afternoon, President Trump, he had a big press conference. He was talking about getting more testing done, working with private labs, also doing more testing drive through centers. What do you know about that? What can Arizona expect? So we learned from the, the press conference that they are looking at potentially doing um, mobile drive throughs or more specimen collection. We're figuring out how that is going to be implemented on the ground in Arizona but we were very excited with that news. Yeah, I bet. Uh, Dr. Lavecchio, you yes. are really at the front lines. You are in the hospitals. You are seeing these patients come through. What exactly is happening in the hospitals? Uh, we're overcrowded. We're, there's a lot of people coming in. We call it the walking wounded, mm -hmm. who just might say, I have a little bit of a cough. I normally wouldn't come in. I think I have coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Lots of times we say, you know, you, you're more likely to probably catch it here, and we recommend that you not come in. The uh, emergency department is probably not the best place to be right. uh, if you have, quote, just a, a virus and you look pretty healthy. We encourage you to come if you're older and you have medical problems. And older, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, and have comorbidities such as diabetes, asthma, congestive heart failure. There's criteria now because mm -hmm. for multiple reasons, but we just can't check everyone. Just because you want to test, we can't do it. We're exactly. restricted a little bit. And Dr. Stefan, I mean, most of these cases that we're seeing really here in the U.S., most of them are mild cases, right? Yeah, I think we have to remember that the coronavirus family includes the viruses that are causing the common cold. Uh, and so a lot of the younger and healthier people are going to get a mild illness. It's going to be a respiratory infection that's in the upper respiratory tree. Mm -hmm. And it's really when it gets down into the chest, and that happens more often in the patients that are older and have some problems with their immune system, and yes, yeah, so there's a spectrum, but the vast majority of people out there are going to have a mild illness, we expect. Okay, that is good news for now. All right, we want to go upstairs, send things over to Mitch Carr. He's live in the Alert Center. And Mitch, we have some questions from our 12 News viewers too, right? We received from one of our viewers reads, quote, my mother, who is living at the Palazzo, and that's an assisted living facility at 19th Avenue and Rose Lane, has informed me I am not allowed to visit her until further notice due to coronavirus. And she said that this was ordered by Governor Ducey. Can we get this confirmed? So can we comment on this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I can't comment exactly on this situation here and, and what exactly uh, this location is, but <clears throat> I think if someone's going to get sick and die, think of somebody in a nursing home. They have multiple medical issues. You're going to go in, maybe bring something in. You know, it's in their best interest. We're just trying to protect the people. We're trying to protect our patients, the public. And I think it's not going to last forever. You know, we just got to realize we're going to get through this yeah. and just go with this short-term quarantine. If your loved one is in a nursing home and dying, you know, I think there's an exception. So just, just realize. And if you do go in and they allow you to go in, you know, you have to wash your hands beforehand, <clears throat> wash your hands after, clean up after yourself. All right, let's take one more question from Mitch. Thank you, Tram. Here's another one. Quote, my husband is a technician who goes into people's homes daily to install services, make repairs, etc. They're often sick, 
I don't think people think to alarm workers if they are ill. So my question is, how safe is it at this time with the coronavirus for repairmen to go into multiple people's homes in the day? When you think of thousands of techs who do this, are there any precautions the governor has thought to issue along these lines? Dr. Stefan, what do you say? So, um, you know, the, there's the social distancing piece, mm -hmm. and so six feet uh, in terms of how far these droplets that can be spread with a sneeze or a cough might, might con conceivably spread. But really the risk is for people who live in the household or have a prolonged face-to-face -face contact within that distance with, uh, you know, 15 minutes of somebody who's coughing or, uh, you know, bringing up these droplets. And so uh, somebody who comes into the house, does their business and gets out and maybe has a, a contract signed at the end before they get back in their vehicle, that amount of exposure would really not pose a high risk. All right. Dr. Chris, I have a question in regards to the, all these school closures. Mm -hmm. It seems as though we are getting another school closure by the hour lately, and it has really ramped up. I know district by district, it is up to them. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, if there is a statewide closure for schools, it really is up to Governor Ducey. Obviously, a lot of the weight would be on you as well as his advisor, too, of the mass situation. Um, do you recommend these schools to be closing on their own, to decide to close on their own? There's always factors at the local level that the schools may be taking into account. However, at this time, we are not recommending school cancellation due to the, the current situation. Um, schools provide a lot of different services for our children, including nutrition. And if families have to work, those kids end up in a different congregate setting, which can continue the transmission only to a group of kids that those kids hadn't been introduced to before. And a lot of times, you know, in these situations with the districts, it's indefinitely, it's one week, it's two weeks. When is it safe for these schools to open up again? That will be a question that we'll be determining as we get more data um, and as the schools start talking with the Department of Education and the Department of Health. Bottom line, is there, are you expecting any major announcements to come down at all? Um, we expect to see additional cases at this time. We do expect that we will move into further phases of our mitigation strategy. Um, so those would be announcements. We're posting those on our website. Um, but for other major announcements, I'm not aware of anything pending right now. Okay, and we obviously know in this situation, things are starting to take a downturn. It will get worse before it gets better. Where is Arizona on this spectrum? You know, I think we have to take the positive look, and I think maybe in China things have slowed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think you take the positive look in Italy, I think things aren't getting worse. They seem to have leveled off. And I think maybe it's doing its course, we hope. Right. Okay. I think as we have more tests, of course more people are going to test positive. Sure. Because most people, 80% or up to 85% are have minimal symptoms, a little runny nose, a little cough. All right. Minimal symptoms. Dr. Lavecchio, Dr. Chris, and Dr. Stefan, we thank you all so very much for your time. Very valuable information. Well, there are still, of course, plenty of questions about the coronavirus. And to get the latest, just download our app. You can text FAX as well to 602-444-1212, and then you'll get a link to complete coronavirus coverage.